Hey everyone, so I found out this really nice workflow to make kind of parametric edge damage on your models with the volume builder. Actually it's two different styles, but I will go with the real volume builder one first. Um, and um, here's the two tests. Here's a very rough test, but you see it working. No damage on the flat surface, nice damage on the edges. And here is uh, the second test, I will show that at the end. Um, with uh, boolean and volume builder. This here is pure volume builder. So um, as you may know um, making nice damaged models usually relies on edge damage and it's easy to do like surface deformation with the volume builder with the uh, delay the new road and some noises but uh, what is much harder is to get proper edge damage right and um, but that is really the key to making the great uh, models and uh, completely skipping the sculpting process, right? Because who wants to sculpt in some edge chips every time? It's so unnecessary. So, um, yeah, let's start with the first one, with the full volume builder one. So here we have two meshes. It's one a concrete barrier and uh, a yeah, cable stack or whatever. Um, and let's put this in the volume builder. I already prepared it here. Uh, we have a volume measure, volume builder, very simple. We have a barrier, we have a cable stack, and we have a um, subdivision surface to smooth the cable stack. As I shown in the last tutorial, if you haven't, uh, for the welding seam, also similar principle, but um, here um, the cable stack to get rid of the ugly um, disco ball effect, right? Because you are volume measure only sees the real geometry and doesn't smooth it smooth it based on the shader you need either high very high resolution or you get the you see the faces right and to quickly recap the trick is uh, to fix this is to go to form break selection select on an angle uh, which is fitting usually around 40 50 45 maybe you do some manual selecting if needed and then use the white subdivision surface function which is hardening your edges based on this uh, based on these um, edge selections right so you go white subdivision surface and then click set and uh, i already done it here and then you can just apply a subdivision surface keeping your uh, edges intact but making a nice smoothing for everything else so you don't get this terrible blowy mass of a model like you would usually get like this right so with this technique or with this trick you can easily fix that all right and um, now for the damage the damage actually uses the same technique click on all your same trick with the phone break selection right click on all your models um, maybe ignore the subdivision doesn't matter and uh, just select it per angle maybe do some tweaks maybe some things you don't want to maybe this here um, in general i would do separate selections per material because not all are the same want the same damage right but uh, and in general you don't want such interior uh, con concave ones right that i would delete Maybe add someone here. Here's like a missed opportunity for some nice shipping damage, right? Think of how an uh, if objects would collide with this thing, where would they hit, right? If they had some rocks or some construction workers carrying some things, where would they collide with the mesh, right? Always on the convex areas, right? So let's uh, have a selection and then you go. Uh, Shift C is the commander but it just uh, go to edge to spline that is the magical function and then it will create you a spline for both of your models right and then just take your spline combine your spline i already have one prepared here but it's basically the same so uh, we have a spline and then we get uh, this tube effect right in the volume builder you can actually change the radius of a spline and do some things like that but i found this 
that is how I started uh, experimenting with it. But that doesn't work so well in my opinion. But uh, I think the trick is to just use a sweep. And um, because I found this very clunky and um, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's me. But uh, using the sweep and then um, make sure to disable the volume builder. Because usually if you add in your circle it does that. So let's go something like this. And I found this as much better control because when I turn it off the volume builder I can still see it. And it just helps, I don't know. Uh, and then here we have our spline. A good trick is to displace this a bit. So let's go to the spline, uh, displacer, add the noise in the displacer and we get something like that. Um, that, yeah, maybe here this doesn't have many great subdivisions and it works better here. You can also play with here the different modes, right? Maybe even if you really want the quality do some cuts if you don't have enough subdivisions here, right? But um, yeah, that's the thing. Here it's a bit more questionable. Yeah, maybe you need to polish it a bit. But yeah, now we have a nice edge mask basically. And now we go to our volume builder. Let's take this higher here. No, no, no. So see better. Now we have our sweep. Now we need to create is. Um, a new folder, right? I already put one here and add our sweep to a new folder and then you add a new delayed in the road, right? And the delayed in the road will now cut into the sweep. So what you will see is something like this. Um, I already applied a nice noise to my delayed in the road with an you can do two things to make this great now. Uh, you either add, uh, if you want a very cheap solution, you go and add a random field that uh, is much faster, but just giving you a simple layered noise, you can also layer some here, I guess. But if you want the quality, and what I would suggest you do over time is go to a shader field, create a shader field. Let's say here we have shader field. And then uh, you go to, uh, um, Let's, let me copy this and then clear. So, but usually it looks like that. Then you go noise. You start adding your noise, right? So far it's the same as the random field. It just inputs the noise, but you see actually how it looks. So this is always preferred, right? Just look at this. Uh, but after you have set the noise, if you really want the quality, you go to the layer add a layer and now we can click on it and now we have the real magic and here you can add simply more noises keep in mind it doesn't want to take textures because textures are in 2d and the noises are in 3d and uh, the volume uh, the sdf of the volume builder works in 3d so textures work to an extremely limited degree and you need to work with noises from what I know. If you know better and know some workaround, let me know, please. <laughs> but um, that is what you would do. And then uh, you try to get something that um, that is adding to uh, whatever you try to achieve. I would uh, suggest you make a couple of um, couple of uh, shader fields which you can just save. Uh, for each material you usually use one for concrete, one for metal, one for like battered metal or whatever. And then uh, just save these. You don't need to do this work every time, right? Just make a, take one hour per material, make a nice noise, uh, layered noise, which resembles the wheel as the wheel material as close as you can. And then uh, you can get really quick, really amazing results by just getting this from a different file and just putting it in white. Right. Um, but yeah, uh, here I, I just paste my alt, probably nothing amazing, uh, just two minutes something. And now we need to set this to subtract, right? And now we have our edge damage. And uh, you see even a hole here, right? Phew. Uh, this is of course not great. Uh, you should uh, really do different splines with different shader fields based on the material, right? 
I also need to turn on the substitution again. Uh, and now to just reduce the noise, you can uh, turn down the sweep or just rotate, um, scale up the, the circle or whatever shape you want it. Maybe it actually makes sense to have the circle be a quad or something if you maybe want some really hard edge chips that could also work well maybe haven't tried it yet but um, if you want that I would suggest not use the circle but the end side to get an um, yeah have a more specific uh, size um, in your polygon size in your uh, editing here uh, but yeah, that is the trick and now you can just polish it and um, get some nice really nice somewhat parametric uh, edge damage and you can also uh, Just edit the spline if you want some more uh, Let me just drag this in a bit or something um, There's also a great trick here uh, another great trick if you go back here uh, It's very easy to miss in the sweep, but if you go here to the details you can actually turn down, change the scale, so um, you can maybe do a preset of a very wobbly, crazy scale, so it goes up and down, up and down, and thicker, smaller, and get more variation like that, or um, do some crazy things here. That's also a great trick, but uh, you see here, the small one wouldn't be affected, and then the big one would be affected, right? So if I turn it on. Now I only get damage at the, these areas. In general, you don't want it to be... Uh, here's probably some spline which shouldn't be here. Ah, the spline is probably... No, not closed. Well, um, yeah, can be easily fixed. Also, another great trick is to use... Uh, have a hotkey for selecting everything uh, which is connected. So you can just go, ah, I don't like this. Connect, delete and go on, right? And you can always just delete some. Oh, I don't want some damage here. Let's remove it and then, all right, much better, blah, blah, blah. Right. Uh, but yeah, that is all you need to do to get a nice volume builder parametric damage on only your edges, right? And you can now put as much polish into this as you want, layer it. Do one smoothing pass and then add a detailed sharper edge one on top and all that stuff, right? But um, yeah, really amazing uh, in my opinion and amazing for game art as well. Now just put this into baking and get some nice curvature, texture it. Um, other people using 3DS or Blender or Maya will be very envious of this, I think. <laughs> Yeah, in Houdini you can do something similar, but uh, it's a lot harder to set up, and it works differently. So it is you don't really have control over it. Here it's you need to do it each time, of course, but you do have the total control. You can just say, I don't want some chip here. I want to I want to do so many different versions. Um, yeah really use your advantage with the volume builder nobody else really has this and it's probably one of the biggest cinema for the adventures i would say all right and then on to the second trick uh, so and here's the second trick which is actually um, using the volume builder less but uh, yeah really amazing results uh, i added some curvature map here and uh, with the delay the new road a nice noise with uh, here's my shader concrete as you can see um, need, need some more work but um, here I added some small sprinkles blah blah blah, blah and then I multiplied them away and down uh, I think many things are actually not used but um, you see um, takes a bit of effort but if you when you have it figured out then um, should be really great and really usable. So um, yeah, let's show you how this one works, right? Let's take that. Yeah, let's say we have this example. Works really great for simple archways and stuff or models. Very great for like hard edge geometry. Um, actually, even works without volume builder in a way. 
Um, so um, let's have this, make an instance, do 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 do, offset it so uh, I see something, get the volume builder and what you want to do now is make a really shitty blobby trashy model out of it, right? Uh, volume mesh it, you could even maybe turn up the adaptive for some, for some even more scratchiness, right? Um, and this is maybe a bit too blobby for my likes, but something like that. Maybe add a uh, random field. Uh, again, here you can also save your the ones you like. Um, I'm not sure why it. Oh, whoops! I did the smoothing right. That makes no sense. Delete the world. Add a random field. So we get some broken surface something which is really uh, really noisy like that but you need to test it in the end okay um, having adaptive also helps to get your boolean not as laggy but yeah you use the boolean for this trick um, now we have uh, a mesh let's get an instance um, no, 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 put this back to where it was, use the quantizing, so we uh, you do even numbers and uh, are no, not doing any guessing work where it actually was placed. And now the trick is using boolean on the magical intersection mode, which you probably never use and I very, very rarely use, if ever. And then you just take your meshed model and your volume model inside. And then you get this sweet damage intersection. You see here. And it really depends then here on your um, on your mesh, on your volume mesh of course. Uh, maybe this number is not too great. Adding the boolean to low quality also helps. Um, much greater performance for that. Um, delay the world. Um, you can also, for easy editing, you can also combine this or just merge it down. Uh, don't take an instance. And then, if you don't care about further editing or parametrics here, then you can just take it and then select all. Normal move is in general an amazing tool. And then you can normal move it to get kind of what you want in this case. So maybe I want more something like that. <coughs> but uh, yeah, here you see this getting very nice concrete style already. And I really put zero effort into this, right? Especially if you look from a distance, uh, really great result. And um, now we can go further and further volume is this right just get a volume another volume builder get some decent resolution on it get a volume measure you see wow that looks really great already uh, the example for my um, for my preview image before wasn't actually very great uh, for concrete but I try to make it work but yeah this here is really nice and you can add even more layers and uh, now <laughs> Now continue, maybe put even the, all, the other workflow with the spline on top of this, right? And uh, have this as a base and then add some extra chips and then add some uh, further noise on um, top here with a delayed new world. And then go into whatever, uh, go into your library and pick out your concrete shader and then add it on top uh, and then bam, we have an you can do this for like 50 concrete props at once, right? Just do it all in one go. That's what I do. Open your model, your 50 low poly, super low poly stuff, and then just voxelize it, right? Uh, do it all in one go, and you have an entire set ready in one batch. Really amazing stuff. And um, yeah, but yeah, you can put so much so much more quality into it, but here, yeah, look at this. I would manually sculpt this usually, and uh, this is all done without any any real effort here. 
and um, yeah that is the second trick right and um, yeah I hope you enjoy and uh, share it uh, remember to really use your volume builder that is one of the big advantages the other 3ds and blender and Maya thing users don't have and um, especially for baking it's so amazing and um, but you need to be smart about your voxel sizes remember here's a drop down menu sometimes you don't need it so high so turn them down uh, much less laggy because that is the thickness and it makes a lot of difference if you don't need it and um, try to be smart with your stacks use the caching um, I, I see it on in our studio if you don't use it um, if you don't do your stack well you can get into very very nasty laggy territory um, try to split your models and uh, turn them off turn them on if needed but um, you need to be a bit smart about your layer hierarchy and how you do it otherwise you can get very big laggy sit laggy workflows and you don't want that um, yeah so think about optimizing your stacks and do you really need all of that how can I split the things and um, yeah all right I hope you enjoyed that and um, yeah see you on the next one Oh, and I just had uh, another great idea, I think. Um, here, what you can also do is, with the cloner, model some type of uh, walk or some chip damage piece, right? Add it with the cloner. And uh, usually the cloner um, doesn't work well with the cloner edge selection. Distribution edge uh, doesn't work well with the cloner that's just not not happening because the cloner will put everything um, where uh, a lot of splines are so uh, you would need to make another spline that should that should start that should start by refresh but uh, let's say we have this uh, piece we add a cloner right then we put the cloner to object mode for the object we take our spline i just made the spline again here and uh, you can also go for the mesh or whatever but let's just take the spline you see what happens what the cloner does uh, it distributes it on um, where most of the spline is right that doesn't work really well so um, you can there are some changes which you can do here count step even vertex the, yeah, the even probably works but um, not great I think uh, the better way of doing is is using um, the spline uh, modifier and then adding that and the spline modifier has an um, transform mode or yeah, no segment mode you need to use it instead of even spacing you need to go it has a random but also a full spacing and the full spacing actually of the spline modifier solves this issue remember to click on the cloner when you when you create the spline so it is automatically applied here in the effector right and then you can still add a random modifier for some extra random and um, then just put this abomination <laughs> into your volume builder again like here I already prepared something uh, put this on subtract <coughs> so it is uh, subtracted and then you can get some uh, holes on the edges or whatever um, what's happening here well, ah I didn't put it in oops so you can get something uh, like this right um, and you can try polish this more and more um, I haven't found the um, 
I haven't found yet how I can do amazing chips on like big edges, but not get this weird hole thing. Um, you can do it manually, of course, and manually placing it, but um, yeah, this needs a bit more thinking, but this is a good starting point to do some really advanced stuff on the around the edges, right? Um, but yeah, maybe you're helped and you're trying something similar and uh, but yeah, give the spline modifier actually a try instead of trying to align a cloner. Um, yeah, maybe that is the solution in some way. I haven't played around it much. But um, yeah, play around with these things. Um, and uh, if you found out something amazing, please uh, let me know. But yeah, I hope that helps. And uh, see you around.